Royal Tudor Beasts Seymour Panther has arrived and let me tell you, I am very impressed. It's really pretty and the quality is excellent. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now today we have an unboxing and overview of the latest release from the Royal Mint, which is of course the Royal Tudor Beast Seymour Panther. There was a big live launch event last Wednesday and then they came on sale Thursday and then delivery happened on Saturday. Really quick turnaround from the Royal Mint for the first in their brand new series, the Royal Tudor Beasts. We have here the one ounce silver proof coin, one of ten. And we have as well the pretty mammoth giant box containing the 10 ounce silver proof so quite a lot to get through today the aim here is to do a little bit of an overview showcase what you might get if you want to get some of these coins or if you've got them on order and haven't had them delivered yet we're going to share some first impressions some interesting kind of feedback i think for the release the buying process from myself and i think a bunch of other people as well who share the same sentiments uh, and generally talk about what is going on with the series and whether or not this is going to be uh, a good one or not and yeah lots of different things to chat about so hopefully you'll find this of interest now in terms of uh styling we've got a slightly different style here to the Queen's Beasts one ounce silver boxes, which were, uh, they didn't have the colorized sides. I haven't got one to hand to show, but they basically were a little bit more plain. They didn't have the nice embossed top either. So I like this new styling of the box. A lot of people might think, well, eh, a box, it doesn't really make a difference, but it's part of the whole package. It's part of the whole experience. And this is a nice looking uh, outer box for the Royal Mint. It came supplied as you saw in this outer cardboard box here to protect it. So good job from the Royal Mint for, uh, you know, they're protecting, it's, it's good. I don't like to see when you get products through and the interior cardboard box is all dinged and dented. Inside there, we then have the box, which is actually the same styling as the Queen's Beast one ounce silver proofs, uh, pretty much verbatim, exact, like for like. And then inside we have, of course, the coin in its capsule, a little certificate of authenticity at the top. There's a little information booklet, which I find really interesting for all of these different coin releases. And we'll have a quick flick through that in a moment. But first, let us get to the most important part, the coin itself. And this is uh, the most important bit, of course, the thing that is made of silver. Now, I am a big fan of this coin and, and this design. And when uh, I saw it in pictures, I thought it would be good. But when I saw it in the flesh, I thought it was better. And that's a really good sign for me. If it's something that you, you think you like the look of when you see some of the marketing images, when you see it listed on the Royal Mint's website, and then it arrives and you get that wow factor, then for me, that's a good sign. And this one really does it. Now, I've heard quite a few people say that it's lackluster in its feel and its look and its design. Perhaps the font is also a little bit boring. Of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and everybody is, of course, entitled to their own opinions. And I'm not trying to make every single person on the planet love this particular coin and design. But for me, it really does tick a lot of the boxes. It's got that heraldry. It's got that pomp. It's got that ceremony. It's got that history to it. And I tell you what, the design actually looks really good. That face on the panther there is absolutely ferocious. It's wonderful. You can see the flames coming out the side of its mouth. And we'll talk a little bit about what that's all about as well. The polka dots on the side, a lot of people question what's that? Is that some royal mint joke for milk spotting? No, that's part of the, as you may have seen on the image here, this is the actual sort of Tudor beast, the uh, the Seymour panther itself. Um, that's just part of what they look like, the history of this particular herald, this sign, this insignia from uh, back in history. And I like it. I think it is a good design. Now, there was quite a few people who were also talking about the um, the anatomy of this particular uh, coin and panther uh, with the confusion about what's going on down below here. So for those that are not uh, aware of what this is, so you've got obviously the back haunches here uh, and the, re the rear right leg of the panther in view. So then the long thing that's coming out here and around and a around the back is of course the tail and the other bit that you're seeing there and there's these two gaps which I think a lot of people got confused about because that 
It was meant to be the tail, was it meant to be the other leg? That's the other thigh of the other leg. Uh, so if you can imagine this little bit here, the sort of the knee, basically, that knee is behind the shield, uh, and then the foot would be behind the tail there. So I don't have any difficulty working that sort of, you know, anatomy out of it. I never have. I think it looks really good. I think the, po the pose and the poise there is fantastic, holding the shield. I like the way that it is different from the Queen's Beast. The Queen's Beast were very centralised. They were on, uh, you know, on point in terms of the middle holding that shield. This has got a little bit more action. We're seeing more of the beasts, which is only a good thing. You know, you're going to be able to see more of the kind of anatomy, more of the um, more of the sort of drama that's going to be in some of the beasts still to come, which I think is really, really good. Um, so for me, it, it is a good design. I do like it, actually. And um, whilst maybe some people won't, I get that. That's fine. But I do think this is an incredible way to start the series. Uh, and I can only imagine what is going to come in the rest of the coins. We've got 10 beasts in total, nine more still to come. It'll be exciting. Now, it's going to be difficult to showcase here for this. Uh, and I don't really want to take the coin out of the capsule uh, when I haven't got the right protective equipment on my hands and uh, at the right sort of environment either. But you can see there is some edge lettering. It's a smooth edge with edge lettering. And I do believe that it uh, says the Hampton Court Palace. Um, that may even be the wrong way up. I'm sorry if it is. Um, but that's really, really interesting. That's different. That's, this is the only, the one out silver is the only one that, that has uh, that edge lettering on there. So really good start for this. Very, very nice coin. Uh, now let's have a look at the 10 ouncer because this this is special. Now, as I said in my, uh, my video uh, when it came out on Wednesday, I will not really be targeting the bullion versions of these when they come out because of sales tax on silver. That's just unfortunately the way it's going to be for me. But I love the idea of having the big chunky beasts. I've got the 10 ounce bullions in all the Queen's Beasts and they're wonderful. Um, but for me, unfortunately, the bullions are just not going to be on the cards for this. So I thought, well, do you know what? Let's push the boat out this time. Let's take a bit of a risk and a gamble because these are expensive coins, don't get me wrong, uh, and go for the 10 ounce silver proof. And I'm very glad that I did because these are incredible. Now, a little bit of feedback for the Royal Mint. Uh, the box for a 10-ounce coin. I mean, I know this is special and it's got a mintage of only 150. But goodness me, when I open this top, and you'll see in a second that the coin is not necessarily the massive drinks coaster um, that you might expect from a box this size. Um, there you go. It's pretty, it's wonderful, but does the box really have to be this big? I mean, I'm going to be collecting 10 of these bad boys. So that is going to be one heck of a storage-related issue <laughs> coming forward. It might well have to be that the coins themselves are stored within secure storage, like safes, and then the boxes just stored somewhere else. But here we have the 10-ounce bad boy with all of that detailing just emphasised on the Panther, really, really incredible. Now, I haven't really talked about quality uh, of these yet, and uh, that's a big topic I wanted to touch on whilst showcasing this. Uh, so when we had the release of the 10 coin, two ounce proof set, um, which you may well have seen videos on uh, my channel, very popular videos with the raw mint, quality being very lackluster and letting us down. Um, there were loads of people who had the same quality issues, loads of people reporting uh, milk and these like little black fibres all over the coins, scratches, anything and everything was wrong with the coins. Uh, it seemed like there wasn't a single set that was good, basically. This has seemed to be the opposite of that. We've had the vast majority, 99% I would say, uh, be exceptionally high quality and no reported massive milk spottings and scratches and quality control issues, which is really, really heartening to see. Uh, there are a few that I've seen that have got a few issues, but by no means are there any that have the stupendous amounts of milk spots like we saw with the, uh, the subscriber of mine, Henry, that sent me uh, that just absolutely atrocious set of photos of his coin set. So that's a good sign from, for me. Uh, it gives me confidence that this set is actually pretty good and will have some uh, legs in terms of the uh, the quality. Uh, this is another little piece of feedback I want to give to the Raw Mint. It's bloody difficult to get the, uh, the actual COA out of these little trays without damaging them. In fact, I'm going to have to get something to pry it out. 
And I don't have anything to hand. That's very typical, isn't it? Here we go. Um, so, yeah, but from my perspective, uh, you know, to have these coins come out in, in good quality, that's a really important thing. Um, you see, it's really very complica complicated to get these out without damaging them. Um, if I'm missing something from somebody, there we go. Now we can get them out. Then let me know. But yes, yeah, so good good start from the Raw Mint, I have to say. that That is, that is interesting uh, that we haven't had as many. Maybe they've changed their production uh, side of things. So there's the COA on this one, you can see. Maximum Coin Mintage, 156. So six of them, I do believe, will be kept back for what's called the Trial of the Picks. But we've got 150 in this limited edition presentation. And there's all of the information on that. So we'll just have to wait and see how the rest of the series comes out in terms of quality, but it's a good start from the Royal Mint in that regard. And um, yeah, I can only hope that that will instill more popularity. I think there was a lot of people who were sitting back, relaxing, waiting to see what the quality would like would be like and what they would look like in the flesh. And for me, I have to say, as soon as I... As soon as I got them, li literally yesterday, uh, I got these and was showcasing them, looking at them, showing them to Mrs. Backup all in, and we both absolutely loved them. And we actually jumped on the Romans website and ordered a couple more of these one ounce silver proofs to have in terms of sets. Now, uh, there have been a few bits of people uh, talking about the fact that there are still some of the different coins in stock from the Romans and how that means it's a flop. I mean, goodness me, we're like three, four days out from the big general release of this coin. and. I don't think that by any means marks them as a flop. Some of the key coins are completely sold, the five ounce, the 10 ounce, the two ounce silvers, they're all gone. The quarter ounce gold is gone. Uh, they were all gone, in fact, pretty much day one. There was a couple of stragglers that came back on stock uh, later in the uh, in those sort of couple of days afterwards. But yeah, that's a really good sign from my perspective. And when you look at the, uh, the mintages on all of these different uh, coins, uh, I think we're in for a pretty good run of these over the course. So these will be all sold out within the next week or so, and that's very similar to what happened with the Queen's Beasts. There's David Lawrence. There's the coin designer, the new coin designer for this particular series. Uh, I really am very, very happy with the design. Mr. Lawrence, well done. Kudos to you. Um, so you guys, you can have a, obviously a pause and a read of all of this particular information if you so wish in this extra large little booklet, which I believe is exactly the same as this one. And here we have uh, the anatomy of the Seymour Panther, which is a nice little addition. Uh, when I was flicking through this, I saw that and that was good. So D, you see the flames coming from the mouth there. Uh, so a lot of people thought that was maybe whiskers and they were very strange looking whisp whiskers, but no, it's flames because, and I believe it was written in the first here, was it? Oh, it's one of them. I've, uh, some way it shows that the, basically the breath of the, of the panther was meant to instill partnership and, and love. And uh, that was obviously what part of this was all about. You know, Henry VIII we're talking about here with his six wives. And for many accounts, uh, Jane Seymour was the, uh, the most popular of his six wives. So uh, hopefully we'll see this really being an interesting coin designed to enamor people going forwards. Now, in terms of uh, the last things I want to talk about, so there's a little bit of feedback that I want to give uh, to the Royal Mint regarding this coin release. So whilst these are absolutely incredible uh, coins so far, I'm really happy with them. Uh, the actual release day itself was, um, let's call it less than perfect for a lot of customers in terms of that buying experience. Um, now, if you're not familiar with the Royal Mint sort of release, what tends to happen is that you get this kind of queue system uh, basically forming online uh, and depending on the popularity of a particular release and how many people are trying to log on to the site at any given time, you'll be put in a queue and it'll take you a certain amount of time to log on. Now for me, I seem to get very lucky because I was on at one minute past nine, not even, it was, it was less than one minute I was in the queue for um, and then I was able to get onto the site. But as soon as you got onto the site, you couldn't find the coins. You clicked on the, the sort of, you know, Seymour Panther link that they had and the, the page where it said available from 9 a.m., nothing there whatsoever. And then there are other ways that you can find coins on the Rollmints website by using the search function. So I did that, I used the search function. Um, and then unfortunately you, you could find the coins, but you couldn't click on their individual listings to open them up and see all the information about them. It just said 404 page not found. But you could add them to basket just by clicking on this little sort of pop-up green icon that came up. So that's what I did and that's how I did it. And that's uh, you know the, the buying process that I had to go through in that initial moment to get the coins that I wanted. Uh, there was then confusion 
information about this particular 10 ounce coin, whether it was orderable on the website because nobody could find it, but there were people saying that if you ring up, you can order it, and then it came online later. Uh, there were then other issues that people were talking about, about payments. If you order what's called a continuity set, so this is one thing we haven't even talked about, which will be showcased more in the uh, in the subsequent releases. Uh, but if you order what's called a continuity set, it means you don't have to bother now going back online to order them. So you have them secured, which is really good, actually, in certain ways. Um, it means that there's going to be less of this kind of rush and haggle uh, to get the coins when they come out and less stress on the buyers but it could also potentially put off quite a lot of people from getting into the set at the start because if you didn't get in at the start then you're not going to get what they are describing as their free display box uh, we don't know what they're going to look like they're going to come with coin two onwards so we'll just have to wait and see um, but yeah you know that's definitely an option to go forward so we'll just have to wait and see what those look like um, but yeah that that was you know Certainly a little bit of a frustration for those coin uh, for those 10 coin uh, continuity sets uh, You weren't billed straight away. You often just billed for your postage So maybe five pounds only came out, but it was meant to be free postage So lots of people were very confused But then when some of the coins have been dispatched the remaining balance was taken and it corrects itself So lots of people very unsure about what's actually what's, what's happening and uh, What will happen as well going forward? So for me, uh, that's the feedback to give to the Royal Mint, that the customer buying experience uh, could have been better, should have been better, um, and hopefully will be better going forward into the future. It's not the first time that we've seen website-related purchase issues from the Royal Mint, and uh, it should be a seamless experience. It, it really should, certainly when you're spending as much money as we are. For those that are curious on the price points, it's £95 for a one-ounce silver proof coin, which might sound like a crazy amount to a lot of you, but... The latest Queen's Beasts, the, the ones that came out right at the end, they're selling easily for about £120-£130 right now. Uh, the first issuings of those are easily going over £200 each, so the potential to double your money even on a 1-ounce silver proof is definitely there. The 10-ounce silver proof here was £895, so very expensive. Similar price point per ounce, of course, but you know, you're going to be very hard pressed to find individual buyers that would be willing to, maybe if you want to get in profit, spend over £1,000 on a 10 ounce piece of silver. But I do think that these are gonna be a key, port, key part of the collection with only a mintage of 150, and they are super, super special, I have to say. So overall, I'm gonna give this one a, a big fat 9.9 .9 out of 10. Uh, for me, the, the point one lost is just simply because there were some buying issues uh, for me as well, you know, about the 10 ounce, not being able to find it exactly, but the design really hits the mark for me. The mintage on, mintages on these are really quite low compared with some of the previous Queen's Beasts uh, sort of iterations that we've seen. So that's a really good sign. The buzz on these has started to pick up as well. I think what, what I was saying there where a lot of people were sitting back and waiting to see what was happening with them and how they looked, I do think that more and more people are going to be trying to pick these up when they start seeing these kind of videos that I'm doing here, showcasing these. I'm, I'm not being paid or endorsed by the Royal Mint to make these videos. As you guys know, I've been overly critical, I say overly critical, I've been, I think, fairly critical of the Royal Mint for a number of years about some of their uh, less than perfect coins and packaging and everything. Uh, but I do want to trumpet them when they do something good and well, and this is definitely one of those times. So we'll just have to see how the whole series pans out. I do think it's going to be a pretty good one. That's, of course, my opinion only, not financial advice. And only time will tell as to whether these are going to be a good investment to make. For me, it's a collection. It's very much a five to ten year style investment. Who knows? We could have some really interesting... Uh, dilemmas going forward with this set. There could be a change of monarch halfway through. Queenie is no spring chicken, and this is a five-year series, remember. She'll be nearly 100 by the time the coin series is finished. And in addition to that, who knows, we might get the King's Beasts afterwards with Prince Charles becoming king. Um, that's going to be interesting. We'll see. Five to ten years for me, these are going to be held for, and that's really going to be how I see it, rather than short-term flipping. Now, in terms of other things still to come, we've got the, the gold and we've got the two ounce silver still to come. So that's going to be exciting. I'll showcase those as soon as we get them. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed a first good look at these particular coins. I do like them. Of course, the bullions are coming out as well. Very excited. As you may gather from what I am saying, this is going to be 
a pretty much staple on our channel, I think, going forward into the next five years. We're going to be keeping guys up to date with what we're buying, how we're doing, what we're doing, all of the different strategies that I'm going to be looking at as well. So lots to cover. Very excited. Good job, Raw Mint. Well done. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, put the thumbs up on it. It's been a bit of a long one, but uh, you know, I think we've got a lot to say about this coin series and I haven't even scratched the surface. So we'll just have to uh, catch up on the next one and showcase more and talk a little bit more about this wonderful series. So we'll see you there. Have a great week ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.